When we are identifying the domain and the range from a continuous graph, we want to think about those two sets of values totally separately. So I'm going to use two different colors. I'm going to go ahead and use hmm, blue for the domain. Let's look at the domain of this first graph. Uh, the value of negative 5 is not in the domain. Negative 4, not in the domain. Negative 3, yes, negative 3 is in the domain because this particular point right here on the graph has an x-coordinate of negative 3. Moving to the right, as x gets bigger, all of these values of x are in the domain because there is at least one point, and in this case two points, um, on the graph with that x-coordinate. These two points have an x-coordinate of negative 1. These two points have an x-coordinate of negative 1.5. These two points have an x-coordinate of negative 2. We go through 0. There's a lot, in fact, an infinite number of points on this graph with an x-coordinate of 0. We keep moving two points on the graph with an x-coordinate of 1, 2, and we go all the way up to this boundary point where x equals 3. This point is not on the graph. We have an open circle, and therefore this boundary point with an x-coordinate of 3 is not on the graph, so 3 is not in the range. We represent the domain, therefore, with the inequality negative 3 is less than or equal to x, is less than, not less than or equal to, less than 3. This is the same as saying x is greater than or equal to negative 3, but also or and less than 3. Let's do the range in a different color. Here the smallest possible value of the range, the smallest y-coordinate on this graph is negative 1. There's one point with a y-coordinate of negative 1. The largest possible y-coordinate, the largest y-value on this graph is 5. And y can be anything in between those two values. So negative 1 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 5. We need to verify that this open dot with a y-coordinate of 2 does not change the range. So we don't need to add O, and by the way, y also can't equal 2. We verify that by making sure there's another point on the graph with a y-coordinate of 2, and there is. So because this point exists and all of these infinite points on this line segment exist, we can say that y equals 2 is in the range, and this open dot does not affect the range. Let's look at the second graph. Second graph, the domain looking from left to right. We may think that the domain is all real numbers. It's almost all real numbers. There's this one particular value of x that is not in the domain, and that is 2. So there is no point on this graph. I need to erase that a bit. There is no point on this graph where x equals 2 or the x coordinate is 2. A lot of students wanted to describe the domain as x is less than 2 or x is less than it's greater than 2, and that's fine. We learned in Unit 2 to describe this domain or this inequality relationship as x does not equal 2. When I say x does not equal 2, I imply that x can be anything else. x can be anything. It's all real numbers except for 2. Looking at the range, there is only one value in the range. Every point on this graph has a y-coordinate that is the same. It is negative 2. So the range is y equals negative 2, or we can write that in our set notation like this with our curly brackets. This open dot doesn't matter. Yes, this point does not exist on the graph, this point where y equals negative 2. The y-coordinate is negative 2. But there's an infinite number of points on the graph where y does, in fact, equal negative 2. Moving on to the third graph. Smallest possible y-coordinate on this graph is x is negative 5. Well, actually, negative 5 is not in the domain, but that's my boundary point. There's no value of x, no x-coordinate less than negative 5. Moving to the right, x can be anything bigger than negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Keep moving, keep moving. A lot of students wanted to stop right here and to say the domain was negative 5 is less than x, is less than or equal to 3. That is not correct because this part of the graph exists. So we keep going. X can, x can be 3.5, it can be 4, it can be 5. It goes on forever. This arrow goes forever to the right. And therefore, the domain is just x is greater than negative 5. 
this point right here is not relevant to the domain. The fact that the graph goes down and then up, that is relevant perhaps to the range, but not to the domain. The graph has a point on it for every x value greater than negative 5. Looking at the range, that's where this point comes in. There's one single point on this graph where the y coordinate is negative 3. So negative 3 is the smallest possible y coordinate. Going up, going up, there's two points on the graph with a y coordinate of negative 1, two points on the graph with a y coordinate of 0. Going up, going up, this arrow goes for up forever to positive infinity. So my range is y is greater than or equal to negative 3. We have to verify that this open dot doesn't change the range and that we aren't going to say, oh, and by the way, also y cannot equal 2. And we don't have to say that because this point is here. The y coordinate of this point is 2, so this open dot does not affect the range. Final example, I'm going to go ahead and change this. I did it differently in different classes. I'm going to do it like this for this toolkit. I'm going to have open dot, open dot, close dot, close dot. I'll talk about why I'm changing this to a close dot in a second. So given the fact that I'm changing this graph to close dot, close dot, let's look at what the domain is. So the domain, oops, that's not blue. The domain has an open dot at negative one, two, three, four, an open dot at negative four. So x cannot be less than negative four. It also can't be negative four because we have an open dot but it can be anything bigger than negative four, leading all the way up to x equals four. So we're gonna represent the domain as x, as negative four, is less than x, is less than or equal to four. I made this a closed dot because in the original graph with an open dot, I would have had to say negative four is less than x, is less than or equal to four, and oh, by the way, also x cannot equal negative two. There's nothing wrong with that, but we don't um, ask that sort of um, example from you, or we don't look at that sort of graph with a continuous domain and then also x cannot equal negative two, but I suppose we could. So just notice if these were both an open dot, I would have to add that x can't be negative two because there would not be an a, point, a point on the graph where x equals negative two. Looking at the range as I have changed it with this closed dot, all the way to this open dot. I want to look at the range starting from the bottom. So the smallest possible y value is negative 2. Negative 2 is in the range because this point right here has a y coordinate of negative 2. y can be anything bigger than negative 2 all the way up to y is 2, not including 2. So we have an open dot at 2. There's no point on the graph with a y coordinate of 2, so that's my upper bound. And of course, y cannot be anything bigger than 2. So my range signifies the fact that y is greater than or equal to negative 2, but also less than 2. I chose to color in this bottom dot in some of my classes rather than, top, than the top dot because this closed circle makes this an interesting example. Notice that the less than is on the um, first inequality symbol for the domain, but the second one for the range, and that's just a really good attention to detail, detail situation. The open dot for the domain is um, on the smallest possible x-coordinate. There's a closed dot on the upper bound. Whereas for the range, an, a closed dot for the lower bound makes it interesting. Now we have the less than or equal to here and then an open dot um, on the upper bound. So we just really need to think about open, closed, and which particular boundary points are relevant to the domain and the range. For students that are confused by this concept, I highly recommend this highlighting on the axis, although it is not required on any sort of assessment. You can just state the domain and range, and that's perfectly fine for a lot of students who can visualize this. But if you're struggling, start trying to think about, okay, which points on the x-axis are on the graph, and then that's for the domain, and then which points on the y-axis have that particular y-coordinate on the graph, and that will give you the range.